you might think it's all fun and games like, oh, I want to do graffiti. Like, if you're like in your fucking mid to late 20s and you barely want to start doing graffiti, why? Why you want to do that? Why you want to do that? Like, to actively be on freeways, uh, you know, be on some Batman shit, climb rooftops and get up. I mean, these are things that you do as a kid and you grow up still doing right i don't understand why some people want to get into dumb shit later in their life because i've stopped uh becoming an active graffiti writer when i was like like 16 17 i was out the game early Rich Max was the turn out of my lifestyle Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies Conversating with the gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would Art. This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would Art. This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would Art. This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would Art. This love's the never ending Walk through the sands of times like Gara On the other side of that gat is karma You wet prada, the devil like inside your box Now while the angels fly over my head Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh We are back with another episode of the God's Hour Podcast In the fucking car It's your boy, Mr. Nine Times And yeah, man, um, I was really contemplating on doing this episode Just because I was like, do I want to do it in the car again? I wanted to break it up for you guys and do something different But you know what? I was like, fuck it, we got these fucking... Lame ass levis over here. They're like moving out. Hopefully, I don't know, but like it's just some funny shit that these fucking cocksuckers are over here moving. They got their fucking washer right next to this big ass U-Haul. This big fucking brolic looking levi right here. I will stab this levi if he fucking ends up doing some shit I don't like. You know what I mean? That's that shit I don't like. Shout out to Chief Keith, man. Let me tell y'all something about Chief Keith. When Chief Keith came out, he was like a bomb going off. And it's just some of the most fucking like ratchet music to come out. That was hard for the streets. You know what I mean? I feel like Chief Keith really opened the door for a lot of, you know, the 21 Savages, the fucking uh was did tr- did he predate Travis Scott? I want to say he did. I want to say Keith opened the door for a lot of what what was to come for the time uh i know i'm gonna get shit on for some of this shit but i don't give a fuck like obviously you wouldn't have like a pop smoke you wouldn't have an ice spice without chief keith so i think it's very dope that you know i want to cover chief keith just for a little bit you know what i mean um uh i love so i like i don't like more than uh love sosa but those were the two songs that put drill on the map and then obviously that one, I think it's called Drill Time with fucking uh, G Herbo, right? When he would, when he was by go, when he was going by Lil Herb, right? Uh, I had, I think I listened to his album Finally Rich one time, and his when did Finally Rich come out? I want to say twenty twelve, right? That shit is so long ago, bro. Finally, Rich, Keith. Yeah, December 18, 2012. I remember when that shit came out because that was when I was, like, still, like, in the fucking, like, in the streets painting. So that was, like, a lot back back then, Serbies and the homies were listening to, like, Stay Scheming, fucking Keith. Who else was out there? What the fuck? Who the fuck is this? Yo, that's crazy. This motherfucker's just walking around with, like, a Capri Sun in his mouth and a hoodie and shorts and shit. I, I should have brought my quet there. I'm, I always contemplate having my hammer on me in, 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 my, in my car ever since that fool tried to jack me for this shit. But, you know, the peas picked me up. What was it, like, a week or two ago? I want to say, was it last week? Yeah, it was. It was a week ago. About a week ago. Week ago. So... 
Yeah, uh, but this is until when this is my car, like my car on paper. Then don't tell nobody. Don't tell. Don't tell nobody. But I'm gonna have the hammer in the car legally. By the way, I'm not gonna have it loaded. But either way, I'm gonna have the hammer. It's hammer time. Um, just going real quick, real quick, going to Chief Keith. Chief Keith spoke to a, a generation of youth out there, including me. Ushered in a lot of great artists to come. Like, I feel like he really opened the door for the 21 Savages. The real gutter street shit, Saw Baby. Like, a whole bunch of great artists. I feel like would have had a tougher time coming in without Keith breaking in the doors. And obviously, you you know, you got the King Vons, the the the, the Bibbies and shit like that. So, uh, I, I fuck with Keith. Shout out to Chief Keith, man. I'm not a super Keith fan. I think I've only listened to bang two or three or some shit finally rich and i have to tell you not all of his shit sounds like love sosa and i don't like there's a famous uh i don't know if it's famous but i know there's a video cali uchi singing the ha 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 like you know she like was so fucking like so sexy when she did that shit but yeah, man. Um, just around that time, um, I was a teenager, and I was doing some pretty stupid shit out there, bro. Like, not not violent, not like you know what I mean. I'm not gonna incriminate incriminate myself, but we, we was getting into some shit, bro. Mostly in the streets, painting, and that's kind of like all i'll really like stamp myself for you know what i mean i did other dumb shit too but it was more so painting that i was doing which i I still love to do now but i don't go out and like murder trains i mean i never murdered trains but i would murder walls and shit like that and it was fun for the time it was really fucking fun i have no regrets but music really paid a uh, played an important part of my youth and especially like we were painting to fucking like red man apollo brown you know and then like the more uh grittier contemporary shit would probably be like yg freddie gibbs chief keef um french montana Wiz khalifa we were like really on our stoner graffiti shit and that's the funny thing about graffiti. Graffiti, uh, I've said this before with Dub, but it's a it's a Venn diagram of, of things. You know what I mean? A lot of different things go into graph that a lot of people don't realize. Like I've said before, like it'll be the fool in the suit and tie that be running up walls and you wouldn't even know it. Um like people at work be know pretty I'm pretty much I'm pretty sure they they know I write, but they don't know what I write, you know what I mean? And I'm not out like I almost burn myself, but I, I, I'm just not out there actively painting. You know what I mean? I'll catch a I'll catch a spot every blue moon, but that's really just you know what I mean. I, to me, what makes you a great graffiti writer is you're holding that like to like uh, shout out a tumor TKO. You hold down your fucking name. You no one plays with your name. Everybody knows this is big serve. So anybody that goes and sees a Wong got my shit. Oh shit, there go big serves. You know what I mean? And then. Uh, I feel like, but me personally, I feel like not only do you have to hold down your name, but you got to be consistent with it. Like people got to see that you're out here doing it. And for me, I feel like I've already solidified my name, uh, at least with my family. Like not yet. Like not everybody knows that I'm fucking big serves. But from for what I from what I've seen, nobody has my name. No one's ever written my name. I, w- I was going by Roic, and I work in the fucking in the valley in the eight one eight uh it fucking sucks to drive all the way out there every day but there's a fucking heroic out there and i feel like slashing this fool at work because i see this fool's shit every day and i'm like this fool it's funny because like we kind of do the r the same way like i would do it but dog i'm talking i was writing heroic in 2012 and you're writing heroic now so i can't be all that mad that Holmes is writing my name but also, too, this is in the Valley. Like, there's a fucking wannabe saber in, like, every major city. You know what I mean? Like, fools just want to jack names or feel like they're the originator of names without doing their homework. And me personally, it's not like I was bombing with Roe. It's not like I was doing pieces and tunnels and trains and shit like that. Like, that's another thing. If you're more low-key, you have to just accept that 
fools are going to have the same name. And if you're like a, 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 a revoke, you know, I just noticed, oh no, Roic is basically like revoke, but without the V and then the EO reversed. But everybody wants a R name, you know, uh, my cousin, my cousin Rigor, he went from Fiener to Remick to Rigor. Uh, I want to say, uh, I want to say Mufasa had an R name. Just uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, um, Evoke. Evoke is Revoke without the R. So there's just a lot, of, a lot of legendary names out there that that are up for grabs. But once you solidify yourself as a legend, like can't nobody take your name? Like I'd better not see nobody writing Saber, Revoke, Augur, Retina, Clips. GKMQ RIP tie like there's just a whole bunch of like rules and graffiti that you got to follow and if not you end up getting like fucked up and it's so funny because there's a a really great so what I say is so I don't know if I've told anybody this but I I, I clean buses so that's how I'm able to see graffiti I'm able to see Amer America's uh, um, ever, like America's trash can is in buses, right? One of America's trash cans. But my point is, if you ever want to see everything that's wrong or what goes on with America, you want to look at a fucking bus that just came back from doing a route. And I find I found needles, methamphetamine, weed, liquor. Uh, those fucking pens, cigarettes, cut open blunt, uh, uh, blunt wraps, alcohol, all kinds of alcohol, magazines, not like porno magazines, but just like the daily news, mag uh, mostly Latino magazines, those uh, Jehovah Witness, the Jesus cards, you know, the prayers, fucking all kinds of shit, bro. Graffiti. And what I really like is like the graffiti, seeing like the different graffiti crews, like, you know, um, I don't know if it's OYC, just a whole bunch of uh, uh, crews out there. I don't want to start shouting them all out, but it's like, it's fucking dope to me that you see like the wars, like you got, I don't want to give these fools any like light on my platform, uh, but there's just like a few fools out like I don't want to call this fool a toy, but he gets up a lot in the buses and you could tell like this is his route like or whatever when he goes to work or if this is a kid. I want to say it's a kid, bro, because a lot of the toy hand styles are like kids. I want to say. And if you're like 30 and you have like these fucking toy ass hand styles, stop doing graffiti, bro. You're fucking it's over. Just accept the fact that you're a toy and fucking put the pen down. Um, this full name Sexo, he began crossed out. I feel like he has like a beef with the. I think it's Reaver or Rever. I want to. I want to say Re Reaver sounds way better. R E V O R, but he makes it like a triangle, so maybe be might be Rever. Whatever it is, that fool has like a clean, a clean hand style. But I've only seen him etched. I've never seen him uh, like do scribes. I've seen him do scribes, but I've never seen him like paint. So Sexo, I've seen him scribe, and I've seen him up uh, painting, at least on the buses. I'm not going to be out there in the 818 to tell you guys, oh, yeah, it's these, uh, you know, I'm not going to be the fucking graffiti dickhead reporter of the week. You know, it's just cool to see the, the graph out there, and I don't have to go nowhere. Like, if I was in L.A., I could tell you, like, all the shit. Like, I remember when I was training over there in downtown, there was, you know, OFA and a bunch of different crews, but shout out to OFA. Uh, funny story about OFA. When I performed at Refo Art Supplies, that's on Cesar Chavez, I had this hat on. And that was when I shot the Embers music video. And uh, uh, P.O., shout out to the homie P.O.'s. Uh, that's when I met him for the first time and, and he comes up to me and he was like, what's that hat stand for? Or maybe we're already chilling or whatever. Like, I don't want to make it sound like this fool pressed me because he really didn't. But he was just like, what's that hat stand for? And I'm like, it's Ontario, bro. Like, what's up with it? Because there's a lot of uh, crews that rep. Oh, obviously, um, 
uh, OTX, OTR, uh, uh, OCP. Like, oh, O stands for a whole bunch of shit. But this is this is the O town. You know what I mean? Like, don't get it twisted. He, I, and I told him, like, you know, it stands for Ontario. He's like, oh, okay, because you're wearing the crew hat. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, it's OFA. And I look around, and, like, at least three other fools had, like, the O hats on. And I was like, I wasn't scared, but I was like, oh, shit. Like, what if I wore, like, a P hat or some shit? You know what I mean? That's the scary part about L.A. is, like, or, like, anywhere in general. You know, it didn't got to be in L.A. But you go around, and you might be rocking the wrong shit. And you might get taxed, you might get slashed, you might get poked, you might get shot. It don't matter. Like, it goes down at a blink of an eye, and some people feel like like wherever they're, they're residing is like, oh, that's base. Like, then nothing's going to happen to me, you know what I mean? Like, no, some shit will happen to you, bro, and you need to be fucking on your square. Because if not, your ass is going to end up getting fucked up because you didn't know how to read the signs. And with me... I'm not moving in, in that capacity to where like fuck everybody is big is big O all day. I mean it is big O town all day, but I'm not out here like flagging about it. I'm not pressing the line on fools. You know, I'm not banging on nobody. The days where I was like trying to be a part of some shit are long gone, you know what I mean? And plus I'm too old. If if you join a gang, I feel like if you join a gang after 21, and even that is late as fuck, like, you're an idiot. Uh, for me personally, I feel like about 18 is when the cutoff point. 21, okay, whatever. Like, that's if you're, like, really, like, you know, let's just say you, you were in a good neighborhood and then you moved to fucking South Central and now you're, you're banging, you know, whatever they have over there. There's a lot of shit over there in, in, in South Central, but um, I was going a lot of different places with this, um, with this shit. But, yeah, you know, with the whole, you got to be careful about what you wear. Oh, here, here where I was going. So... One day, story time, I'm, I have like a, a red shirt and I'm, I'm somewhere on the west side of Ontario and I'm just going to eat and I'm with my pops were talking and shit. This fool hops out the car, looks at me, gives me a crazy look, bro. I don't know if I ever said this on a podcast. Gives me a crazy look, like one of those like... If you are who you think, who I think you are, it's going to fucking go down right now. Like not a, not tomorrow, not in 10 minutes, not five. It's going to go down the second I fucking confirm that you're who I think you are. So this full walk starts walking up to me and I told my dad, look, I'm going to step aside because I don't know what the fuck's going to happen right now. And I'm like, God just fucking if something happens to me right now just please don't like let it like whatever like whatever happened to me like happened to my father so this fool goes up to me and this isn't within seconds right so i'm just looking at this fool and he comes up to me and he like looks at me and once he figures out that i'm not who he thinks we oh fuck this is where i'm fucking up as soon as he he fucking looks at me and like he he doesn't recognize me. He's like, he looks stupid as fuck. And he just kind of like walked like he went to like the end of the line where we were all waiting to go order. And I was like, was this fool going to fucking stab me? What the fuck? I'm like, this is the last time I'm ever going to wear a fucking red shirt over here, dude, because I don't want to get into the, the politics. But over here, red is the enemy. And it goes back to like, you need to read the fucking signs. I was slipping. I'm not I'm thinking, oh, it's you know, it's uh it was like broad daylight or some shit in like a fucking January or something like that. Like very um what is it? Uh uh like if it like if it was all good, you know what I mean? Like very just okay, you know, I we're just going out to eat and shit and it and it and it could have turned into some bullshit, which it just goes back to like you you got to be, like, on your square, bro, because I literally could have been 
fucked up or worse over wearing the wrong color literally like i'm not trying to be funny this isn't big serbs trying to be up in here talking to make fucking fake stories like did i stutter one fucking time telling this story no you know what i mean i don't remember like after shit after that like obviously i like eating what do i like eating from there like two fucking carne asada tacos and a carne asada burrito okay that's that, that's great but like there's been shit like that that's happened not only to me but to other people and it's like fuck fool like why are people why does this shit go down like why does it have to be like this you know what i mean and that's why i kind of only wear like my hats and shit when i go to my shows because at least if fools are on that type of time i'm like i'm here for music bro i'm here to perform i don't give a fuck what you bang as a matter of fact and, and, and not in like oh like fuck what you're banging but if you're on that type of time i'm gonna be cool with you bro like ofa and all them homies like i never i never you know I, it never bothered me that these fools were uh, uh around or none of that shit you know what i mean and and i'm glad i wasn't banging or none of that shit because if i was i would have been tripping heavy on those fools and it would have been like the code of the the code of the street is like it could it could be one on one against 15 bro you represent your set and you're gonna get fucked up but that's how you go back you know that that's the the stupid hood tales where you you know that full fucking big serves from fucking you know what i mean one two three that man them one two three fools is crazy man he would he by himself try to fuck up 15 of us and we stomped him out like those are the dumb fucking stories that people like glorify in the hood and and they try to get you to fall for the trap i knew it was a trap growing up bro like i knew the whole gang banging street shit and all that i knew it wasn't for me and i could have easily slipped in into some dumb shit from you know being around whatever el monte bowen park la, la puente ontario like it doesn't like i could have i was around fools that could have put me on and i, I would have been doing i probably wouldn't be doing a podcast right now i would have been doing some other bullshit my point is is like basically how i want to wrap everything up is just uh, like a part of this before i go to something else is just like just be aware if you're gonna be banging know the consequences this one dude he wanted to get into graffiti he had no idea he was in a group chat with a bunch of us and you know he had like a million questions and i'm like i told him well graffiti this life is something you don't ask questions on a group chat it's something you kind of meet other people and you figure out along the way there's no graffiti manual like hey here here's a book and you fucking follow rule fucking number one and two it's just there's a lot of unspoken things there's a lot of if you move this way, they gonna move that way. If you do this, you better be prepared for what comes with them choices, bruh. So my whole thing was he wanted to write like LSD, right? And I told him, that's already a crew. You can't do that. You can do a, a um I've seen like a four letter combinations, like uh uh I've seen a, a KR80, if that's a crew or... A, but see, this is the the blurry line. Like, that could be a crew that could... Because I told him, I'm like, A2A, that's a crew, but that's ATA. You know what I mean? Obviously, it's... Uh, the K at the end is, like, the crew, right? O-F-A-K, you know, R-W-K, uh, R-W-K-C. Like, it's just, like, there's a lot of things. And I'm giving y'all, like, Graffiti 101 here, but... Um, I'm just remnant, like literally I have a whole bunch of notes and I don't even know if I'm going to get into a lot of them because like, I'm just like, we're here, you know? So I, not, not that I want to glorify graffiti, but it was so a part of my life that I'm so passionate about it because I lived the, the, the life and it was not even like I was hanging out buildings and shit. I was just around real real fools that were about it like my fa like my family rigor Kale, mufasa evo fucking who else would go painting with us 
I think that was just us. We would go. And most of the times we wouldn't even paint ourselves because the fucking paint was locked up. So we would just go have markers on us, catch shit on the stop signs or slabs and shit like that or whatever on the way to the tunnels. You know, there'd be six of us lift the heavy ass gate, crawl under that shit, go explore Hell's Pit. We would go see the R.I.P., you know, the Papa Nacho. That's my grandpa. He They had... Um, you know, Nono and, sh- and 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 all them, they fucking, Hell's Rebels, they fucking tagged my grandpa's name. They fucking, they, uh, it, it was more of like a throwy, it was like a, um, kind of like, like a mini piece, a big throwy type thing. Right when you get into Hell's Pit. And, um, I want to say you can't get into Hell's Pit anymore. I think they put a lock on it. They, I think they always had a lock on it, but someone always ends up cutting the, uh, breaking the bolt off and you know getting in but that tunnel had a had one way where you would end up in somebody's like front yard and then i think they ended up cementing that shit over or something like that and then uh the other one i think just hit a dead end but like you know hell's pit and zelda's tunnel were like the two spots we would go to burnt i mean hell spit wasn't really burnt the cops wouldn't roll through there because they knew like oh no one's gonna get in here it takes like six people to lift it the gate is super fucking heavy you know what i mean what the fuck this fucking chino snuck up on me eh? you know what i mean like it's just like the cops wouldn't roll through hell's pit but with like zelda's tunnel them fools would roll through and you know i fucking I ran from the cops from there at least like three times. I ran from the cops, you know, other than that. But like if we're talking about just strictly Zelda's tunnel, I remember um, I want to say it was after school. This is a long this is well over 10 years ago, guys. So I'm trying to. Cause all the all the memories are kind of a blur. So when we ran from the cops, I know me and KO were together. And I wanna say I wanna say we went up the hill because you could go through Zelda Tunnels two way. You go you go through a horse trail or you go on the other side through the street. So we went up by the horse trail, and I think we saw the car, and we were like, oh, fuck, they must have just got, this. these fools must have just got here. So we ran through, and like stupid asses, we fucking, we went into the tunnel. If this is the time I'm recalling, we went into the tunnel, and you know, Zelda's tunnel is not like, it, it's like some shit where at some point, you have to get on your stomach and crawl. Like it, it, it starts off to where you have to like crouch, crouch in and kind of like, you know, like gorilla status, go through that shit. But then it gets smaller and smaller. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Cause no, wait, I'm getting confused. Am I getting confused? Does Zelda tunnel take you to the front yard or does Hell's Pit do? They're very close to each other. That's why it's kind of confusing. Because Hell's Pit is right down the street from Zelda's Tunnel. Like, you can walk from Hell's Pit to Zelda's Tunnel easily in, like, 15 minutes if you're slow. And you got to take a shit. But, um, very, very fond memories, man. Um, so when we were going in there, I remember the cop shining light right, right in my face. And I remember being like, okay, well whatever i guess we're going to jail or some shit but i want to say they saw because you could see it like the flashlight the light hit us so the cops were probably like either they really didn't see us or they were just like oh we ain't going in there what the fuck so because it was far like even though i saw the light it was like you know far away at least like 50 yards and you the cops got to go 50 yards into the fucking tunnel with like all their shit on if they really wanted to press the line they could have but they were probably like oh it's only like two of them let's get the fuck out of here right or or i don't know maybe they're looking for somebody i don't know i don't know i don't care so yeah man we will get high in there we were paying in there 
infamous, infamous Zelda's Tunnel. Uh, Hell's Pit. We, I think I've only been in Hell. I think I was only in Hell's Pit like four times. Um, v- very few people have been there because, like I said, you need a lot of people to barely lift the gate off the ground. I don't know how the fuck these fools. What is it? Uh, uh I don't know how they open the gate. You would have to like have a tractor or something and lift it by like a fucking crane or a tow truck or some shit because this gate it bro literally it was like me G A K R E yeah there's six of us lifting the fucking gate to get in and yeah, granted, we're like all like fucking teenagers, but dick, like, when's the last time you needed six motherfuckers to do anything? You know what I mean? Besides have an orgy, if that's what you're into, but fun. It was like really fun times. Um, Going back to these are the things, though, that like, you might think it's all fun and games like, oh, I want to do graffiti. Like, if you're, like, in your fucking mid to late 20s and you barely want to start doing graffiti, why? Why you want to do that? Why you want to do that? Like, to actively be on freeways, uh, you know, be on some Batman shit, climb rooftops and get up. I mean, these are things that you do as a kid and you grow up still doing right i don't understand why some people want to get into dumb shit later in their life because i've stopped uh becoming an active graffiti writer when i was like like 16 17 i was out the game early i was in the game early i I must have been like 12 but my run of like catching spots and doing shit and being active at night, two, three in the morning out there hitting up was very short compared to a lot of people. A lot of people in a lot of places that are legends have been writing since they were like either younger and they'll be in their fucking 50s still destroying DYC, bro, destroying your city. Um,. I love it. You know, uh, uh, I got a lot of, I got like a lot of girls know, know me because I, I, I would do their names, you know, in high school I, I, I would sell, you know, just to make money. Cause I would always get like free lunch and I hated free lunch or sometimes I want to get like, there were like a year, a few years I didn't have lunch. I didn't get lunch. You know what I mean? Uh, um, I didn't get that free lunch. I had to pay for it. And my mom wasn't going to give me no fucking money. My mom always thought I was a a marijuana from like an early age. My mom has issues, but who doesn't? Um, So, yeah, I would sell, you know, do do the people their names. I've done it not only for so many people, but for so many schools. You know what I mean? Like I was up in Sierra Vista. I started in Sierra Vista. Then South Hills, Colony, and Chafee. So there's at least four schools worth of chicks out there with my shit, like with my my tat, like with their names. You know what I mean? And and they know who I am, and I think it's awesome. You know what I mean? Um, there's one girl. You know what I mean? It's always that one fucking girl that I forgot to give her her name, and it was a big. I I did like a big fucking piece for her. You know what I mean? I had like the sunset and like, you know, fucking. Like little birds, little crows or whatever on it. And uh I still have it. I still have it. That shit just took me back. I had like a mean old fucking flashback. You know, with with graffiti it was something that I did because I was just me- like Graf- like now my graffiti like how i how like i always needed an outlet for expression and when i was younger it was graffiti now it's music you know that's pretty much what it was once i started doing music i let go of the graffiti shit like i would still do it 
but it, was, it faded out, right? So once I started getting in, like, you could ask, like, my teachers and shit, like, on my homework or notes or whatever, I would fucking have, like, all on, like, the border of, like, the shit. I would have all kinds of, like, either, like, lyrics or, like, whatever, bro. Like, I never, I was very careful to bur not burn myself because I got burnt as a freshman. I remember, um, I remember I was walking around and I had blue paint on my fucking cargo shorts. This is when I'm a freshman, guys. So that just goes to show you, like, how long I had been doing it already. And they were like, you know, the wannabe mall cops, Paul Blart comes up to me. Hey, when you're done eating, come up, uh, come and see me. And I was with the homies and I was like, I'm not going to get anything. So what's up? He's like, I need you to come to the office and go to the office. And he's like, yeah, we got reports of uh, a six foot fat Mexican out here painting with a blue marker. Uh, you got blue paint on your shorts. So we're going to search you. And uh, they searched me. They took all of like the best heroic pieces I had on paper. And they took that shit. They took pictures of it. Wasted like a whole hour of my fucking time, my lunch. And how long was lunch back then? Was lunch only like 30 minutes? I want to say it was only like 30 minutes. They really do program you to get you ready for like the workforce at an early fucking age. But yeah, you know, I just got like memories of that shit all up and down. It's funny because I'll, I'll be trying to get into that shit again. And I'm like, I don't have it. I just don't have that hunger, that drive anymore. You know, like I did when I was young. When I was younger, man, I would fucking like, there was no, like, you couldn't tell me not to do it. There was no way you could have even paid me to been like, yo, dog, just here's a hundred dollars. Just that. I would have been like, fuck you. Fuck that honey. You know what I mean? I love this so much. It was like, uh, maybe like my first love of the creative arts. Cause I, first well mu actually no music was always like my main bitch right but i love listening to it so that's not a creative outlet started doing graffiti no 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 first i started playing drums that's what got me into music it, like making music but i wasn't doing it on my own i was doing it for school so the music shit was always floating around Floating, floating, floating around. Get into graffiti. Start writing raps. Get into music. Stop writing graffiti. Now I'm kind of like, oh, I still got it. Trust me. Like, my hand style, my hand style is fucking impeccable. Like, nobody's fucking with big serves. Like, as far as, like, my hand style. Like, I got two clean fucking hand styles. You know what I mean? And... I still catch a spot every now and then, but it's not like how it used to be. And I'm not saying graffiti's bad and I'm not trying to glorify. I'm just saying what the fuck it is because there's some people that don't do it anymore. I don't think Rigor, Rigor and Mufasa are my mentors. I don't think they paint any. I don't think they write anymore. But you best fucking believe. I want to say the last piece that I've seen Mufasa do was years ago. Easily fucking years ago. Rigor, same thing. But I think Rigor tattoos now. So you got to go somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, delinquency and, and degeneratism and fucking juvenile theories all got to go out the window once you become an adult. And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it has to turn into something. Like, like, okay, like, for instance, I stopped doing graffiti, but... I do the canvases. So you can you could say that I never really stopped. It just became something else. Like I love drawing sunflowers and that's mostly because of Jaime. That was, you know, w with him and a lot of things I do mean something. And I feel like that's what a lot of people are missing. They're missing the the 
passion and drive to do something fulfilling in their lives. I feel like that's why a lot of dudes have like 10 baby mamas. I feel like that's why dudes get locked up, do stupid shit, get peer pressured into things because they don't have the, the freedom and the mindset of independence to do what they themselves would already be doing. And I had that from the jump. With graph, it was more so like, I love doing this. I love painting. And my uncles would tell me, like, this shit ain't nothing, bro. Like, you need to figure out what the fuck it is you're going to be doing because this ain't it. And I would never tell none of, like, none of my family members that. If you want to paint, bro, paint. I would encourage you paint. Just don't go out in the street. Like, buy some plywood. You know, do your thing and find out what it is in that. You can make money off of and get busy and build a business off of it because you're not going to make no money graphing. There's only a few graffiti writers that actually took their graph to the mainstream and got paid. You can't say Banksy because Banksy always had like a message to him. Even if it was like some street stencil art shit. Great. Good for Banksy. But like if we're talking about the fools that were actually active destroying the city, like a saber, going back to like Revoke, Retina, these are homies that actually were a uh, KR menaces to fucking society uh, as far as painting. And they became a business. You see Earsnot, Earsnot's hand style was on the fucking doors album, Earl Sweatshirt. A lot of people uh, don't know that. You know, I I, I want to say that is his hand style. Uh, I, how I know it's him is because it looks like Earsnot's hand style. What the fuck? It looks like Earsnot's hand style. What the fuck? This feels weird. I thought this fool was going to run up on me. Fuck, and I didn't even... I'm more scared because I don't have nothing to defend myself right now. I'm like, fuck, if this fool comes at me with something... Fuck it, I'll hit him over there with the mic. Ping, 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 ping! Fuck it. Oh, they give me me no eyes right now. What was I talking about? There's very few graffiti artists out there that took their, their, their art and made it a business. Revoke, I took a lot of influence from Revoke where he does the... It's like a shitload of spray cans and he does like the the thing with them and he does like the patterns and shit. You could see me with the spiral style, you know what I mean? I, I I really took it upon myself to say like fuck it, like what do I want to do? And it just started with me painting album my album covers. I'm like, you know what? It's a no-brainer. Like I should have been doing painting my album covers from the jump. The first one I did was um what was the first fucking one I did? It's a long time ago. It had to have been a long time ago. If not, um, was it Evil Grin? Evil Grin might have been the first one. I want to say it was Evil Grin and fucking. I don't remember the, the 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 ones. I don't remember. I don't remember. I'd have to because I've done so many music albums that like. It's just hard. I'd have to have, like, all my shits, like, all my covers. I literally have, like, just from, like, 2020 fucking two to now, I have, like, almost 50 albums, which is crazy, bro. And I got a whole shitload of music lined up, and I need to record, like, eight songs. So it's like, fuck, dude. I want to paint more of my album covers. I will paint more of my album covers. It just, you know, it has to come. Um... So I think I've alluded to this already. Uh, I'm going to cut it short. I mean, it's not short, but like I have a lot more to say probably. But I would just say like find your passion. Really find out what it is that you love to do and figure out how to get paid for, for it, bro. Make a business out of it. There's some people that they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what to do. They don't know what they want to do. And I think it's sad, bro. I think you really need to be on your P's and Q's and figure out because life is getting more and more fucking expensive. And the the the, the more time you figure out how to, like, make something of, of what you love to do and not scam nobody, not fucking you love to fucking kill people or none of that crazy shit. Fuck you if you like doing that crazy psycho shit. But I'm just saying, 
if you love bread, find out, you know, bake some fucking bread. And if you love baking bread, sell it. And then become Billy the fucking baker, right? It only makes sense to me. Find your passion. Find out what you love to do and do it. This is the God's Hour. Max, Max, what's the turn out of my lifestyle? Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies. Conversating with the gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. Word. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. Word. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. Word. This love's the never ending saga. Walk through the sands of times like Gara on the other side. Side of that gat is karma, you wet prada, the devil like inside your box now while the angels fly over my headstone.